In this lesson, we'll be creating what's called a flyout menu. Essentially, it's a menu with a submenu that animates, and then it animates in reverse. So we have to deal with this basically inside of a movie clip. I'm going to do a test movie right now and just demonstrate the result. And then we'll build one from scratch. So here we have basically a little menu inside of a movie clip. And you see when I mouse over, it does have basically four buttons, the main menu button. So when I mouse over it, the submenu items appear. And when I mouse away, they will animate in reverse as when they came in like that. Okay, so they fly in and they fly out. And that's all done inside of a movie clip with some animation of certain buttons. Uh, we're also going to have navigation from within the movie clip to control the main scene one timeline. So if I click on song, I do have a placeholder here. You will actually have to fill this content in based on previous lessons. So I want a song bar a movie clip with a song bar and a song playing, a progress bar. And then on video, a separate page. And you can see the structure here on the main timeline. I have keyframes for the three separate areas. Video, you're going to put a video component on this page. So you will need to uh, maybe use one of my older videos in another lesson to place on this page using the video component. And then the third item it's just a contact page and really it's just you putting your last name comma first name so I know who did the project and that's really it so I'm going to show you how to create the menu uh, the content for the three pages you will have to create on your own steam if you need to revisit the older tutorials do so or some of your older files may help you as well okay so let me close this and again just talk about the structure on the main timeline, I have an actions layer. A layer for my labels, which I'm using for frame labels as well as labels in the content, if you will, text elements. So you can see the little frame labels here. And then for content, I will ultimately put the content on the content layer, which is also separated by the keyframes, as you see here. So I've just got a placeholder there with a text bar right now and you will put in the requested content in those locations. Then the menu is what we call persistent. So there's one keyframe on frame one, and it does persist for the whole length of the timeline. Therefore, it is present in the uh, runtime movie the whole time. All right, it's just one keyframe, and it spans right across the whole timeline. So all the work really is inside of that movie clip. And if you look over in my properties, you can see that it's a movie clip, and it does have an instance name because we will be attaching code using our snippets at some point here. I'm just going to drag that actions panel out over here, which is partially collapsed. Now I'm just going to let you know I'm working in the Animate 2021 version. I realize that we're going to be working across a few versions in here, but what I'm about to show you will work in this version, this newest version, and work backwards into older versions. Okay, so having said that, I'm going to go into the movie clip and just describe it very quickly, and then we'll build a new file from scratch. So let me double click on the movie clip on the stage. That way I can see it in context with the environment. And if I just grab the playhead, you'll see here I have several layers, an actions layer, a layer for my frame labels, and then the three submenu items go on their own layers. And you can see they're animated here, indicated by this yellow fill, telling me that it is actually a motion tween. So I've got three animations with a motion tween. And then they stop basically in the middle here. It looks like frame 17. And then I have them animating backwards. And I'll, you can see that these are all keyframes, so I'm going to explain why that's the case. And then down here again, I have my persistent menu button, if you will. And a very important button on frame 17 here, which is in the invisible layer, it's actually the invisible button. So the way this works, and we've done this before in simpler versions, is that when I toggle, or rather mouse over this button, oh, there goes my dog. <laughs> when I mouse over this button, it's going to trigger the playhead to go to and play at this frame label called over, so it plays in, and you can see here as I go slowly, 
the animated buttons come flying in and they do stop and rest and then I have a stop command here and added the extra button called invisible and the invisible button basically works the same way as the main menu button in that it's set to receive a mouse over so when you're exiting imagine this is an island and this is the water surrounding the island when you escape the island and enter the water it triggers the playhead to start to play and what happens there is that it will play out and it will do the animations in reverse and when it gets to the last frame in Adobe Animate the default is when it goes to the last frame if there's no code there it will default and cycle over and loop back to frame one and in frame one we do have a stop command so it will stop and pause there ready to receive a mouse over trigger to start the whole process over again okay so I'm just sliding my playhead across here and you can sort of see how that animates so it starts here I mouse over here it sends my playhead here to go to and play so therefore it plays out my three buttons fly in and then I have a stop command right here and I also added uniquely on this frame only an invisible button so that if I mouse over this light blue part which represents the invisible button it triggers my playhead to play it's not a go to just a play command which means it will play out from that frame on until it encounters another stop command which happens to be in frame one okay uh, maybe we'll quick take a quick look at the code before we uh, get into building this so actions here and if you don't have your actions panel you can always go up to window and find it in here okay I'm just gonna move this a bit and also your navigation through actions I can see my main timeline I have code on frame one so I can click that and I can see that it's simple code it's just a stop command just to hold my playhead on pause if you will until it gets triggered by interaction by the user so let's go inside of the menu which is indicated here under menu frame one I have two things I have the stop command and then I have the generated code that was made from a code snippet on mouse over and you can see here if I open this up a bit more I have a mouse over mouse event mouse over and this is all again generated it's creating uh, this this code here and it comes in with a placeholder and you're going to replace the placeholder with go to and play and then inside of the brackets in quote marks the name of the frame label which happens to be over in this case the instructions come along with it so they can be helpful if you're not familiar with some of these code snippets okay and then on frame 17 basically the middle of the animation if you will we have again a stop command our invisible button which again is set to a mouse over so similar to the original uh, button and it's a play command which is the opposite of stop you can see the syntax is similar it's play which means the playhead will launch and continue until instructed otherwise now let me scroll down here to the code and how to navigate the timeline of the playhead on the main timeline of scene one we've done this before but I'll just remind you so I start by creating a code snippet highlighting the song button having created a, a uh, instance name for it called song underscore BTN I went to my snippets I created a mouse click event which generated this function and then I went in to the code and added go to and stop frame label with quote marks and in front of that this is kind of the magic spell if you will that pushes this instruction outside of this timeline up to the root timeline which happens to be the scene one timeline and it's movie clip brackets root dot okay so this tells the code to ignore the current timeline go up to the main root timeline then execute the following code so it's capital M capital C brackets root dot you will have to type this all in by hand inside of the function and it's the same for the other two buttons so really if you understood all of that you're good to go but I will demonstrate this building it from scratch okay so let me just collapse my actions here and I'm just gonna go back to scene one here through my navigation and if you want to resize this you can always go fit in window and it will fit okay 
So that's uh, the explanation. Now we'll move on to creating a new file.